another fantastic job, my God. And I'm watching you in this movie, and all I can think of is there's no way that you didn't take this role because you were a dad. Right. Um, 20 years ago, I wouldn't have been able to play John Kessler. Uh, and also, it really was important to me to show the archetype of a single father and a son that was a positive, loving relationship. There have been a lot of movies about mothers and their children, mm -hmm. uh, but not so much about fathers and their children. And there is something in the zeitgeist, uh, a gender bias, that uh, if you're a single father, you're not really capable of raising kids. And that's not always true, yeah. and I wanted to show that. How, you know, how was it for you, Nick, not to kind of put your personal feelings? I mean, you have two sons, you're working with this fantastic little boy in this movie, and it's a really heavy-duty material here. I mean, some of, this, some of the dialogues came directly out of my experiences with my, my oldest son, Weston. Um, it was, you know, that one-on-one -on -one relationship. And uh, there were moments that I recalled and, and put it in the film bec and dedicated the movie to him from my, my end because, uh, because of that. You know, it was, it was very easy. You know, it was like, you don't have to think about it. It's kind of effortless. Yeah. You just, you just are. Yeah. If you had, you know, would you want to know the future? Would, did making, did working on a film like this make you think about fate and inevitability a little bit more than you would have? Only, only, I would only want to know it when it comes to my kids. Yeah. You know, I, I don't think there's anything that could break the, the uh, parental survival instinct of your children. Um, but above and beyond that, I don't know that I'd want to know. Um, I, I like surprises. Yeah, um, and I love the element of the time capsule. You know, I would love to put stuff in there now, 50 years from now, have, you know, people open them. If you could pick one film, not a Nicolas Cage film, that you want people to see 50 years from now, which one and why? Something that really kind of has moved you, maybe, as a kid or something? Well, I guess Wizard of Oz, because... You know, Albert Einstein once said, when asked, what would you have your children read to get them ready for science, he said, fairy tales. And I think that Wizard of Oz is magical in that it stimulates the imagination and it gets this sort of sense of um, wonder and awe that I think is, is important for getting through life. Yeah, I don't know, it is a classic. I yeah. think it'll hold up forever. It will, yeah. It's one of those fabulous movies. Yeah. Um, the action and the drama balancing that in this movie, the special effects in this film are fantastic. I mean, that subway scene scared the crap out of me. Yeah. I mean, seriously, is it is it still, you know, is it effortless now for you to kind of balance this stuff or still find it a challenge? I mean, I think it's... Uh, <clears throat> my job is always the same. I just have to try to get to the truth of whatever the characters are feeling. So it doesn't change depending upon the genre. But I will offer that I, I want to make movies that will entertain you and stimulate you without having to resort to gratuitous, um, you know, killing. Uh, so science fiction is, is a great way to, to get abstract, to get surreal, and still have you connect with me somehow intuitively um, and still entertain you. Well, you're always entertaining us. You did a great job in this, and uh, and you. I want to, you know, can't wait for the 300 more films you have coming out. My uh, God, uh, do you ever get to sleep? Uh, I uh, I like to keep active, but I don't have 300 more movies. <laughs>